Tyler Cowen, an economist gets lunch, new rules for everyday foodies. Dive into the world of An Economist Gets Lunch, where author Tyler Cowen debunks common food myths and explores the intricate relationship between economics and our food choices. This book summary offers invaluable insights on how consumer education trumps marketing hype and how a lot of the best food is cheap. As you devour the content, you'll uncover the history of food production, the influence of agribusiness, and how to find quality food without breaking the bank. Discover the relevance of creativity, innovation, and restraint in redefining the culinary landscape and uncover the ways in which we can not only eat well, but also contribute to a healthier environment and society. The Truth About Agribusiness Americans' demand for organic, locally sourced food is a current trend. Many are happy to pay a premium for such food, but for others, it is unaffordable. Big food corporations are capitalizing on these demands by creating green supermarkets and eateries. However, the choice is not between good, expensive food and bad, cheap food. It is about striking a balance between consumer education and marketing hype, considering the issue globally and historically. Demystifying Food Snobbery the idea that good food must be expensive and produced only by experts is a myth. The backlash against convenient packaged American food gave birth to the food snobbery based on three precepts, expensive good or slow food, inexpensive food produced by agribusiness is bad, and experts must tell people what to do since food buyers don't innovate. However, the best food can be cheap, and being a wise and informed buyer is the best way to counteract food hype. Food is a product of economic supply and demand, so it is essential to know where fresh supplies come from, creative suppliers, and informed demanders. Slow food, although carefully made by hand from pure ingredients, is a quaint concept and is not suitable for civilization. If everyone returned to slow food, modern life, science, medicine, and the economy would drastically change. Mass food production enables society to feed many more people than it could without such advances. Even if they were poor, creative people could devise great dishes from inexpensive groceries when they knew how to bring out the best in their ingredients. The Evolution of American Food Habits Americans have a fascination with pre-19th century food production, but the reality was that food safety was questionable, and preservation techniques were unhealthy. The advent of modern food transportation in the 1920s made food cheaper and more accessible, but it also led to extreme food preservation methods. Convenience foods gained popularity in the 1950s and 1960s due to more women joining the workforce, leading to bland, sugary, and salty foods becoming the norm. Today, ethnic markets offer healthier food options that reflect pre-war attitudes towards food. By investing more time shopping for and preparing food, Americans can reclaim healthy and tasty food habits. Smart Food Choices for Better Value To get a great meal at a good price, choose restaurants that prioritize quality, fresh produce, and look for composition-intensive dishes rather than ingredients-intensive ones. If you're on a budget, skip the pricey drinks and opt for tap water instead. Beverages tend to have a very high markup so those who order them subsidize good food for those who don't. This cross-subsidy concept is also apparent in movie theaters and coffee shops. To save money and get the most value, aim for simple choices like black coffee. By caring about food and making economic decisions, consumers can enjoy great meals without breaking the bank. Foodie Savvy Seeking the best value and quality food? Avoid city center restaurants, hunt for food trucks, and listen to the foodie advice of people aged between 35 and 55 who have experience eating out and share a low tolerance for bad food. Finding quality food that doesn't break the bank can be a challenge when eating out. According to the author, takeout food can be more economical than dining in a restaurant since it means less pressure from high trained wait staff who want to make a higher tab. The author points out that city centers are not necessarily the best places to find excellent food as high rents make it hard for restaurants to sell quality food only. 
City center restaurants often rely on creating the right ambience and adding decoration to attract customers while marking up the mediocre food they sell. The suburbs, on the other hand, can offer better quality food for less money, and food trucks are hotspots for authentic ethnic meals. For those seeking advice on finding quality cuisine, the author suggests speaking to people between 35 and 55 years old, preferably who are prosperous or middle class but not necessarily very rich, as they have experience eating out and a low tolerance for bad food. Finally, the author warns to avoid restaurants with an excessive social scene because they can get away with overpricing mediocre food. The Dark Side of Agribusiness Agribusiness and food technology have saved many lives, but mass-producing food for profit has social and environmental costs. This includes land and animal abuse, and unhealthy food. The answer is to improve infrastructure, not to do away with the industry. Critics blame agribusiness for the obesity epidemic, but self-control is the solution. Americans who have the most education, money and travel weigh the least, but the U.S. food environment encourages overeating. Indulging in good food while staying fit is possible with restraint. Solving global food insecurity. Poverty, poor infrastructure, and corrupt governments are significant barriers to good nutrition and contribute to global food insecurity. While malnutrition is a more severe problem than obesity, Earth produces enough food to feed everyone. Enabling agricultural developments and agribusiness in Asia and Africa is the key to solving hunger. GMOs can make crops more nutritious, resistant to drought, insects, and diseases, and increase yields, which could reduce global warming. However, strict requirements for labeling, controlling, and monitoring GMOs put their benefits beyond the reach of developing nations. Poor countries need more food, cheaper food, and better sanitation. Therefore, practitioners should improve the GMO model rather than advocating for shutting it down. The future of GMOs portend stronger crops such as drought-tolerant cassava, insect-resistant cowpeas, and fungus-resistant bananas. Additionally, giving remote communities the opportunity to produce their food is essential. Thus, consumers must focus on the lack of continuous agricultural innovation and on areas that need more food rather than how far their food has traveled. Eco-Friendly Eating Habits Individuals who are lovers of food can also become environmentalists by engaging in eco-friendly behaviors. The book encourages the adoption of a proactive approach by engaging in policies that support principled forest management, discouraging driving and urban sprawl, while also eliminating water subsidies. The book summarizes that ecological measures must have more benefits than just making one feel good. For instance, instead of preferring to use plastic bags, Canvas bags should be used to make a difference in landfills. The focus should be on examining how growers produce food rather than how far they transport it. Having a taste for expensive foods with high environmental impact such as steak will encourage fewer purchases. Furthermore, eating vegetarian meals more frequently also goes a long way in reducing one's ecological footprint while buying fresh food rather than refrigerated food helps conserve energy. Food waste should also be avoided as much as possible. The book envisages that the market can also adjust automatically by promoting the establishment of more affordable places to live in walkable cities. Ultimately, the book summarizes that the adoption of such eco-friendly eating habits will undoubtedly contribute to the creation of a cleaner environment by reducing pollution, energy consumption, and environmental degradation. As we conclude this compelling journey through the book, An Economist Gets Lunch, we are reminded of Tyler Cowan's powerful message emphasizing the importance of consumer education and dispelling food myths. By understanding the supply and demand dynamics of food, recognizing the significance of innovation in agriculture, and rejecting spurious nostalgia for pre-19th century food production, we can make informed choices and enjoy delectable meals without burning a hole in our pockets. The book fosters a realistic perspective on food technology, GMOs, and environmental consciousness, encouraging a balanced view for eco-friendly practices in our daily lives. Embrace intelligent food choices and embark on a culinary adventure with a discerning taste and a renewed passion for creating delicious 
and affordable meals.